Hey everyone, let me show you something interesting. I have created two string variables, name1 and name2, and both these variables have the same value. As of now, I am comparing them using the equal to equal to operator. And similarly, I have also created ct1 and ct2, and these two variables also have the same value. Okay, but they are created using new keyword. Alright, so what should be the output of this program? Okay, so let's run and find out. Cool. So for the first comparison, the output is true, but for the second comparison, the output is false. Alright, now this is the strange part, because in both cases, strings look exactly the same. Right, but when we compare them using equal to equal to, we get different results. So what's really happening here? Why does one comparison return true and other return false, even though the values look identical? Well, the truth is, before we can understand the difference between equal to equal to and dot equals, we need to go one step deeper. Because this is not just about comparison operators, it's about how Java actually stores these strings in memory. So hello and welcome to my channel, The Curious Coder. In this video, I'm going to break down this entire concept from scratch. And by the end of this video, you'll have complete clarity on when to use equal to equal to and when to use dot equals. Now to understand everything smoothly, we need to learn something called string constant pool. It is a hidden mechanism that decides how these string values are stored in the memory. Okay, so here's the thing. In Java, we have this thing called heap memory, right? That is where all the objects are stored. Now inside this heap memory, Java has given us another special space, a small dedicated area called the string constant pool or string literal pool. And this pool is dedicated only for strings. Okay, so here's how it works. When you declare a string like this, string name one is equal to Shivam. This Shivam part is called a string literal. Now this literal is saved inside that string constant pool. And the variable name one will just hold the reference, basically the address that points to this Shivam inside the pool. So name one is a reference variable and it's pointing towards the literal Shivam, which is there in the pool. Okay, so far so good. Now here is where it gets interesting. If you create a string like this, string city one is equal to new string Delhi. Now, because we use the new keyword, Java says, all right, this is an object. So I'll create a new string object in the heap memory, but it is also a string. So Java also keeps the literal Delhi in the pool. Okay. That means now we have two things in memory, one deli in the pool and another deli in the heap. And the reference variable city will be pointing to the one in the heap, not the one in the pool. Got it? I'll repeat. Basically, whenever we create a string literal, that literal gets saved in the string constant pool. But whenever we create a string like an object, then it's two copies are made, one in the heap memory and one in the constant pool. And in that case, the reference variable will be pointing towards the one in the heap memory. Okay. Now, why are they doing it like this? Why do we need this pool? Right. So let's take another example to understand this. Let's say if you do this string name two is equal to Shivam. Now JVM will check the pool first. Okay. It will say is Shivam already there? Yes, it's there. We created it earlier. So what does JVM do? It won't create a new one. Okay, it just makes name two point to the same Shivam literal in the pool. All right, so both name one and name two are now pointing to the same object in the pool. No duplicates, no extra memory wasted. Even if you create thousands of literals which have the same value, all their reference variables will be pointing towards the single literal in the pool. And that, that's the whole reason the string constant pool exists. Okay, it's there to save memory and improve performance. So this, this whole concept is your foundation. If you understand this properly, you'll be able to answer almost every question that ever comes up about string comparisons. All right, so that's the theory part done. Now let's switch over to IntelliJ and we'll see this in action with some hands-on examples. So let's begin with the same example. First, we need to understand when we are using equal to equal to operator to compare any two strings, it's actually not comparing their values it's comparing their references. Okay, the address that they have, basically it's comparing 
where that object is stored okay where is the location of this of these two strings and if the location is same then it will return true but if the location is different then it will return false okay so what happened here is when we created a string name one equal to shivam it is a literal so it was saved in the constant pool and name one was pointing towards it then you tried to create name two is equal to shivam but since shivam is already present in the pool so name two will also point towards the same location okay so that is why when we compared it using equal to equal to this returned true but in case of city we use the new keyword so it was stored in the heap memory delhi basically delhi was stored in the heap memory and uh, it was also stored in the pool but city one was pointing towards the one in the heap memory okay similarly city two will be pointing towards a new object and delhi will be again stored in the heap memory however in the literal pool it is stored once only but still city two will be pointing towards delhi in the heap memory okay similarly city one will also be pointing towards the one in the heap memory and in the heap memory they are two different objects okay so that is why when we printed it using this it will give us false because these two objects are at different locations okay and i'll run it again you can see that for the first one we get true but for the second one we get false okay now let's say i also add system dot out dot print ln name one dot equals name two similarly i'll also add for city city one dot equals city two now what should be the output let me run and check so now you will see that this will return true this equals return true this city one returns false because they are at different location but this city one dot equal city two will also return true okay now why is that this is because the equals method actually compares their values okay and i can show you this if i go to the implementation you will see that uh, this there is an implementation in this string class and actually if i go more deeper in the concept i'll tell you that this equals method belongs to the object class okay object is the parent class of all the classes and in the object class it just compares it it also uses equal to equal to only but in case of a string it is not using equals method of the object class okay it has its own implementation so we will look into this all right so this is the implementation of equals in the string class and uh, if you just go inside this like eventually it calls here you will see that it will loop on the every character of that string value and it just compares every character okay and if any of the character is if any of the character does not match then it just returns false and if all the characters match then it will return true okay so this is like the internal implementation of the equals method basically what you need to know that if the string if both the string contains the same value okay if both these string contains the same value and even though they are at different locations still equals will return true in case of a string okay so that is the logic that is why even though for city they were at they are at two different locations still dot equals has returned true as you can see here dot equals will be returning true okay so this is the concept now let's say i will just change one value okay i will just change this name two to shiva and name one is shivam now if i run this you will see that this returns false this also return false this city one equal to city two also return false but the city one dot equal city two returns true okay now why is that because now the literals are different so they are present they are two different literals so in the pool also they are present at two different locations okay so name one is pointing towards the one which is shivam and name two is pointing towards shiva which is there in the pool but it is a different literal okay so obviously they are not equal their locations are not equal and their value is also not same okay so that is why because you can see that there are two different values so dot equals will also return false right for city one again the value is same but their locations are different because these are two different objects so this equal to equal to will return false 
but since their value is same hence this equals method returns true okay now let me do one more thing let's say let me just change it back to shivam only yeah now let's say i create one more variable one more string variable string name 3 and its value is equal to naman okay now what will happen now there will be another string literal in the pool which is whose value is naman okay and name 3 will be pointing towards this literal okay also one more thing that i want to tell you like for case in the case of city 1 and city 2 uh, we have two copies of them okay we have delhi delhi in the heap memory and we have delhi in the pool as well so city 1 and city 2 are pointing towards the heap memory but no one is pointing towards the one in the pool okay so that does not mean that it is unreferenced okay actually whenever nothing is pointing towards something in the pool then jvm is pointing towards it internally okay so jvm is internally pointing towards this delhi in the pool because its reference variables are on are pointing towards the heap memory okay so this is something you should know why because sometimes in the interview they ask like when garbage collection takes place will that literal pool will be removed or not okay sometimes they ask it like this so if you guys don't know garbage collection i'll tell you whenever there is an object which is unreferenced okay basically there is no one pointing towards it in the garbage collection it gets removed okay but that will not happen in case of string literals because in the pool they are being referenced by jvm internally okay they are, they are not unreferenced they are still referenced by jvm it's just that they are not referenced by these variables that you created okay they are pointing towards the heap memory but the ones that are there in the pool they are being referenced by jvm internally okay so this is something you should know all right so now when i created this literal naman it is being pointed by name 3 okay because this you have created like this all right you have not used the new keyword so name 3 is directly pointing towards naman and now let's say i try to create another string name 4 and this i create like this using a new keyword and this time this is naman okay so this is something interesting here what i did was i created both the literals with the same value but i create both of them as literals and here i created both of them as objects with the same value but what i'm doing here is that one of them is a literal and the other one is an object so now what will happen okay so again we will just go by the concept what happened was this will be created as a literal okay this will be there in the pool and now here in the name for we know that we have used a new keyword so definitely an object will be created in the heap memory all right so in the heap memory we have naman but since it's a string literal as well so jvm tries to create a naman in in pool as well okay but in the pool there already exists a naman so it will not create another entry in the pool okay so in this case two copies will not be created there will only be one copy in the heap memory and uh, it will be pointed by name 4 okay name 4 will point towards the heap memory because we have used the new keyword but since naman is already present in the pool so name 3 will be pointing towards that and an, and another naman will not be created in the pool all right so this is how it will be and i will just simply again check these values so system dot out print ln name 3 equal to equal to name 4 let's say and uh, similarly we have name 3 dot equals name 4 okay so let's see what the output should be let me run this okay so the last two outputs are false and true as expected why because they are at different location name 3 is pointing towards the pool but name 4 is pointing towards the heap memory where this naman has been created okay so the references are different but again their value is same so equals will give a same answer okay equals will give true all right now similarly if i create one more string string name 5 is equal to new string naman all right new string naman like this now again what will happen is this name 5 will be created in the heap memory and it will again not be created in the pool because in the pool we already have naman all right now i will do one thing 
I will just simply change this name 4 is equal to not this name 4 name 5 equal to Naman okay what happens now basically what I did was initially I created this object using the new keyword and now I change this name 5 to Naman okay and now let's do one thing we'll just simply try to print these values let's compare name 3 and name 5 okay name 3 dot equals name 5 and now let's see what will happen okay great so you can see for the last two comparisons we get true for both these cases all right why because what happened was in case of name 5 we created uh, an object number definitely it got saved in the memory yes in the heap memory but now when i changed it to name 5 is equal to naman i explicitly changed this reference variable to this literal value okay so now name 5 is pointing towards this literal value that already exists in the pool and name 3 was also already pointing towards this naman right so that is why this comparison will give me true and since their values are equal so definitely this will also give me true and uh, what what about this naman in the heap memory so no one is pointing towards it okay we started pointing it with this name 5 but i changed it here now it's pointing to the one in the pool so this object is actually lying idle in the heap memory and even jvm internally is also not pointing towards it okay no one is pointing towards it and this one will be cleaned in the garbage collection whenever jvm will perform its garbage collection okay because this one is sitting totally idle and it was a it was an object that was created because of new keyword initially name 5 was pointing towards it but then i changed it to point to the to the literal value and that is why no one is pointing towards it and that will be cleared in the garbage collection okay so this is how we can also change the pointing of these reference variables okay so whenever i do it like this here i have not created another object okay i have not created a new object what i have done is i have just simply changed the reference okay change the pointing all right similarly let's say i do it like this name 5 is equal to null okay now what now if i simply try to compare it again okay let's compare these values and if i run my project okay so you will see that both will return false because now name 5 is actually null and it is not pointing towards anything okay it's not pointing towards any value and let's say if i just replace this if i just swap this instead of name 3 dot equals name 5 i'll just say name 5 dot equals name 3 and now if i run it cool so in this case we will get a null pointer exception okay so this is what null pointer exception is whenever there is a null field and you try to invoke some method using this field so here what i did was this was name 5 was null it was not pointing towards anything in the memory okay this is not a string this is a reference which is null it's not pointing towards anything and i tried to call a method dot equals method basically equals method i tried to call from it so this will give me an exception that is null pointer exception okay so this you have to take care of that whenever a reference is null you cannot call equals method from that okay so these are some different examples that i covered and these are the ways in which this question gets asked in the interview okay so you must uh, go through all these examples try to understand what's happening but eventually the foundation is same okay if the concept of string constant pool is clear to you and if you know that equal to equal to compares the references and dot equals compares the value if these two logics are e clear to you then you can answer any question framed in any way okay now here's a homework exercise for you let's say there is a string s1 is equal to hello and string s2 is equal to s1 plus world now what should be there in the pool what should be there in the heap memory and what should be the output of s1 is equal to is equal to s2 and s1 dot equals s2 okay think about this and post your answers in the comment section I will be giving answer to this question in my next video why are strings immutable in nature okay so stay tuned and subscribe to my channel the curious coder